crystal ball and I was in the elevator with him and I wanted to take the time to thank him. I didn't get to thank him the year prior for the show. And he looks at me and he goes, oh, I remember you. <laughs> long, long pause. We get Which is the proper response, no, you all know. It is, yeah. And I'll never forget that as long as I live. But suffice to say, I've gotten to meet everybody. I really, truly care about every one of you. And uh, G.I. Joe is a team, no matter what field it is. It's not an individual. I can't thank you all enough for everything, putting up with me and whatever. I hope everybody had fun. And I hope everybody continues to have fun. I can't help but thank the designers enough for everything. And thank you. So, next on my list, how about Mr. Bazigian? Come on up here. You said you're going to do some Come on up here. <laughs> Yesterday, um, I said that Larry Hama gave G.I. Joe its soul. Uh, today, I want to say Brian Savage has given it its heart. Um, I uh, want to thank Brian for giving me an opportunity to keep in touch with G.I. Joe. Um, and I also want to thank all of you. Um, everyone has been coming up to me you know, the last few days thanking me for everything I've done with G.I. Joe. Um, I want to thank all the fans because um, without you, this all wouldn't have happened. And uh, once again, I just want to say thanks to Brian, to Becky, to the entire staff of um, of uh, fun publications. You guys have been great. Um, good luck. And as everyone else has said, this is just going to morph into something different next year. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of you downrange someday. Thank you. I want a picture of all of you. <laughs> no, 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 no. And of course, you know, you can't run the convention without volunteers. So you need some volunteers. So Martin, where are you? Come on down. This is our miracle child right here. <laughs> Or as he was known in the rafting circles, the victim. <laughs> How you doing? I'm sure some of you know me. My name's Martin, and uh, I've been here, coming here for 17 years. Uh, my first uh, convention was 2002, three and three quarter. So it's, it's been a pleasure, and I hope this doesn't stop. So it's going to start somewhere else. So I appreciate all of everybody here, and. The team, about the girls, and the, you know everybody here. So, thanks. Dave Pisani, you're up. <laughs> Everyone's been really nice, so I'm going to say some really bad stuff. Yay! <laughs> you're just like the internet, aren't Yay. you? Yay! Like the internet. You know, not like like everyone said. You know, I came for the toys and I and I stayed for the experiences. You know, lifelong long friends like Barry and Todd and, and, and a bunch of everyone's. But you know, Brian, uh, he he built a company that not not only did he do like this is the way I'm going to do it. He always said like, how do we make it better? And he gave us all the opportunity to make the conventions and the clubs better by you know us participating, writing articles and doing photo stories and everything. So. You know, he made it a true collector experience. So I can't thank him enough for really building a club that was our club and, and building this hobby into something that we wanted to be. So thank you guys very much. You know, along the way, when you meet new people, sometimes you go like, man, I have more brothers from a different mother than I ever knew. What? You like this, and you like that, and you like this, and you like that? And he said, me too, me too, me too. And I'll tell you that, that's some of the people that I've met in all this along the way. So, the, now I'm going to say Barry for a little bit down the road here. But you know, you always need good reenactors at the show, don't you? So, Des, where are you? 
Has she spearheaded the finance and kept y'all together? And I know she's not the only one, but that uh, she's done such a great job in corralling people and convincing them that they should dress up in silly costumes and be silly. Don't, Don't be silly. Don't be silly. Don't cry. Shut up. The first time I, uh, I came to JoeCon, I was really quiet, really nervous, and um, it took a couple of years for me to feel comfortable, and I remember meeting Goggles, and he was like, don't worry about anything. Just just be yourself. And then I met Gary and Debbie and Maddie and Martin, and I, I get emotional. So um, it's been a really, really wonderful ride. I love you guys too. Um, but it isn't the end, and we got two extra years. Yeah. And we weren't going to get those two years, so thank you. And thank thank you. Daryl again. <laughs> But I couldn't have done it without you guys and you guys. So you guys helped the finest be able to succeed and give back to the community and help vets and do charity work and be more than it was when before I even got here. So, but this, you guys are family, man. It, it breaks my heart, but it's bittersweet. So thank you for the memories. All right, Gary Godso, because you always need a good podcaster along the way. Not that we don't have one or two in the room, but they were one of the first ones. And volunteers and bringing their family forever. And they asked me, my voice is already gone, this is pretty typical, but they asked me to, to kind of come up and give some, some brief thoughts. Of course, I'm going to try to write some stuff down. So. Um, to me, I've seen it all with Joe Con, uh, circle of life, literally. Uh, my first show, uh, my wife was six months pregnant. Um, this show, my daughter is going to high school um, at next school year. That's how long we've been doing this. Um, then we talk about bringing people together and forming families. You two right here, Chris and Kate. I, I, I tease them and I said I'm, I take 5% of getting them together, but now that I'm in front of you and I got the mic in my hand, I'm taking 100%. <laughs> but again, if it wasn't for Joe Khan, these two aren't ever connecting. And now we got a, a great new start over here. And then sadly, the circle of life has to stop, but it stopped way too early for this guy. And Gary, you know, d despite sharing a hobby and a name, uh, was a big change in my life. Uh, I used to be a big guy. You know, like most of you knew that. I'm still pretty big, but I'm not nearly as big as I was. I lost 110 pounds because of him. <laughs> You've seen some folks that I've already connected with, already come up here and talk. Martin, over there, was the very first guy I met in San Francisco. Uh, but I got some names that I want to mention because I love you guys truly, and I mean that. Uh, Don and Anthony, uh, Kevin Bond, George Greeno, James Cavanaugh, man. James Cavanaugh makes life worth living. <laughs> Joe Colton, I love you as a sister because I can't say anything else. Uh, <laughs> Mike Urizari, Justin Bell, making things special. He's not here, but Terry Desar, he's been to a couple of these, he's been a big part of the community. Um, you know, Kirk, making America great. Thanks, man. <laughs> uh, but also you get to meet people like Ron and Larry and Daryl and John Chu and Bill Ratner and Michael Bell and Mary McDonald. Where else am I going to do that? Where else? Here, Joe Con. So to Brian, Becky, Lanny, Dave, let's, let's also give some love to Pete, even though he's not here. Jeremiah, Bill, Harry, Angie, Karen, all the guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. You, you've been a big part of my life for the last 16 years. You've watched us all. we watched you guys. I don't know what you're going to do next. I know you're going to fly a plane. Uh, but but uh, I, I, I wish you guys all sincerely, 100%, the best of whatever you do. I hope it comes to you.
All right, Mr. K, come on down. Now, you, a lot of you have heard the story about how Bel Barry and I met and how he got involved in the club. Uh, he got involved because he wrote me a complaint letter. <laughs> and I picked up the phone and called him and said, would you like to be part of the problem or part of the solution? And he says, I would love to help. And there you go. We've been friends ever after. Yeah. So if it hadn't been for these shows, there's a lot of my most excellent close friends I would have never met. So Barry? I am the poster child of be careful what you wish for because <laughs> I broke... Well, I went to my first convention in 1994. I met Brian. I realized there was a club. And that convention for me was a shopping trip. I didn't know about a community. To me, it was just, I'm going to buy toys. And I found out there was a club. I met Brian there. And um, I joined the club. And I liked the club. But I, I very pretentious back then. Thought the club should be better. So I wrote Brian a letter. And he called me on the phone. We talked for an hour and said, well, why don't you help me make it better? And I said, all right, I don't know what to do. And he said, write something. So. I started writing, and I wasn't a writer, but I started writing for the club, and before I knew it, I was interviewing the people that created G.I. Joe, and that was like I would never have dreamed I would have had an opportunity to do that, and I got to do that because of my, you know, my letter that I wrote to Brian, and then the next thing I knew, I was actually helping him design toys, which, again, never thought I would do. Like, I got to do things through my affiliation with this convention and with this hobby, you know, I never would have done, and uh, that's all because of Brian and Becky and, and it's amazing people. Yeah, that Barry told me once, he goes, you know, and you've heard me say this a couple times, there's cities I would have never gone to if they wasn't for the convention. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a compliment or a complaint? I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe both. But Maybe that's true. Both. That is true for uh, probably everybody in this room. We, there are places that we've gotten to go and things we've gotten to see and experiences we've had because of what you put together. And I know it's been said, I don't want to keep repeating what everybody keeps saying, but... You know, it started out as, as a toy thing and a collecting thing, and it's become about family. And my best friends to this day are the people that I met through this hobby. I have friends that I've known since high school, and I don't really even connect with them anymore. But it's all these guys, and Dave and Todd and Daryl. And, I mean, I, honestly, I feel like you've become my brother over the years. You're like my older brother. It's just unbelievable what we've got. not that old. <laughs> You're older than me, so... But I've watched your kids grow up. You've seen my I mean, it's amazing. The people that we've met, the things we've gotten to do. And I know everybody said it. It's not the end. This isn't going to end. The toy hobby is going to be there. The relationships are going to be there. And it's up to us to keep those things going. And it will morph into something else like this has. I mean, this started out as a very different hobby. These conventions started out different, and they've turned into something amazing. But that is really, and I know Dave said it, but it's, it's a testament to you guys and what you've done. Because... There were toy shows and there were G.I. Joe conventions before you started, but it really has grown into something it never would have if you guys hadn't taken it over. So, thank you for everything you have to Okay, well, you know, you hear me say it's my fault all the time, but if you really want to know whose fault it is, yes, come on down, Kurt Groen. Because it's her fault for asking me to ever start doing these conventions. <laughs> Jerk took your line. <laughs> I started with um, Hasbro in 1989, and Kirk sent Vinny DeLeva and I to a convention in California. And it was the first convention we went to, and it's the first time we started to understand what the convention can do for a product. Because of the heart and the passion you people have, we used to call you knobs. It's a military no, it's a military term for people and you know the privates. This is your general. There's your general, Sam Spears, Don Levine. Those are the guys who drove it. But it's you, like Kirk, uh, Kirk said, is the heart of GI Joe. And in '94, Vinny and I got to see what a convention was like. We also realized it could be better. We moved it to a second group. And it did get better. It grew. It was getting stronger. When I went, was uh, transferred to Cincinnati, they kind of left me alone with this all of a sudden. It was Karen Lehman and I. Our boss was Joe Scriven. <laughs> and he approached me, he approached Karen, and said, hey, I can do this for you. We well, said, yeah, right. <laughs> and, but the show that we went to was kind of, a, we weren't very pleased. Well, before that, I said, how'd you like to have a G.I. Joe club? It doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> 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 See, that's right. So Brian, uh, no, but he, we called Brian up and said, you really want to do this? And amazingly, he said yes, because again, he had to deal with us. He had to do, later it was Daryl. I mean, no matter what, you're still dealing with a corporation. 
Best move I ever made. Rob Ryan, man. Now, you have to understand, picture the two of us on the phone. There's no such thing as a short conversation. <laughs> Five, six, seven hours later, we're done. Yeah, no, you will. Yes, I won't. <laughs> but it was the best thing I did. Um, unfortunately, and Brian was great, every year you invited me. Every year I had to say no because I was going on vacation with my kids or I was in China. But when Brian offered me the chance this time, kids are gone, you know, I got a chance to come here. It was not anything that was going to keep me away. I would have paid for the trip myself to see you guys one more time, as a group, as a family, with your father. And I told you I'm not that old. <laughs> You've been busy. I should retire. <laughs> and I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You are the heart of G.I. Joe. Keep it going, keep it strong, and Daryl, if it doesn't go anywhere, it's your fault. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Mr. Latham. I asked Dave, but he said, I don't like to say anything. But we all know Dave loves us. I don't know if I can do this. You can do it. 